Hello and welcome back. I'm Barbara O'Neill and today we're going to delve into a crucial topic, the functions of the liver. The liver is one of the most important organs in our body, playing a vital role in numerous essential processes. From detoxifying harmful substances to helping in digestion and regulating metabolism, the liver is truly a powerhouse. If you've ever wondered how this incredible organ supports your overall health, you're in the right place. In this lecture, we'll break down the liver's key functions, backed by science, and discuss how you can support its health through your lifestyle and diet. So let's get straight into it. So phase one basically begins probably within about 24 hours of, of, uh, of no food entering the stomach. So we give our guests their main meal at 1.30. So by midday the next day, which is Monday in our retreat, phase one kicks in. In phase one of the liver detox, the liver takes this fat-soluble toxin. The fat-soluble toxin could be a variety of things. But remember, it's fairly toxic because the liver has stored it in fat. So the liver takes this fat-soluble toxin and it breaks it down to a metabolite. A metabolite simply means the first stage of metabolism or the first stage of breakdown. But this metabolite is quite toxic. This metabolite can be a hundred times more toxic than it originally was. That is definitely so with alcohol. This metabolite creates a lot of free radicals. And free radicals are damaging to the tissues. It's also, also highly volatile. Because of this, your liver has certain needs. So let's discuss the needs that your liver has at this stage because this is quite toxic, this metabolite. So the liver needs antioxidants. What's an antioxidant? Antioxidants are very high in electrons. And a free radical is basically an atom missing an electron. And when an atom is, is missing an electron, it grabs an electron from the next atom. And then that atom grabs one from this. So you've got this chain of free radical action that can be damaging to the tissues. But God in his wisdom and mercy gave us plants that have lots of electrons on it. They're called antioxidants. And the plants that have the highest antioxidants, in fact, one antioxidant is called beta carotene. So beta carotene the plants that it's found in is your dark green and your dark orange vegetables. These dark green and dark orange vegetables are particularly beneficial because they provide the body with an ample supply of antioxidants that can neutralize free radicals. Some examples of such vegetables include spinach, kale, carrots, and sweet potatoes. Incorporating these into your diet can help the liver in its detoxification process by ensuring that these free radicals don't cause excessive damage to the tissues. Another key antioxidant that the liver needs during detoxification is vitamin C. Vitamin C is found in high quantities in citrus fruits, strawberries and bell peppers. This vitamin plays a crucial role in protecting the body from oxidative stress and supporting the immune system. Within 36 hours of starting a detox, phase two kicks in. So for our guests that arrive uh, Sunday, have a Sunday lunch, and who are fasting Monday, Tuesday, certainly by Tuesday morning, phase two has kicked in. And remember, the purpose of these phases is to bring the fat-soluble toxin to a water-soluble state. In phase two, the liver takes this highly volatile, highly toxic metabolite and joins it together with amino acids. The union of the toxic metabolite with the amino acids, like a 
joining together. The medical term is conjugate. A joining together, that produces the water-soluble state. So we looked at what phase one needs, which is antioxidants, beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E. Also helps to have the minerals and the vitamin B. So what does phase two need? Phase two needs protein. Because protein supplies the amino acids to mop up the toxic metabolites <laughs> to produce the water soluble state. How many people take protein on a fast. They don't, do they? And then they get sick and their therapist tells them they're going through a healing crisis. They're not going through a healing crisis, they're going through a liver crisis. Because if you don't supply the protein within 48 hours of starting a detox, if you don't supply some protein, that person can suffer 25% liver function loss. What happens is the liver starts to break down to supply the protein needed. To avoid the potential risks associated with detoxing without adequate protein, it's crucial to incorporate a small amount of protein even during a fast. This could be achieved through options like bone broth, a small amount of whey protein or plant-based protein sources depending on dietary preferences. The goal is to provide the liver with the necessary amino acids to continue detoxifying without compromising its function. It's important to understand that the liver is constantly working to neutralize toxins even when we aren't actively detoxing. During a detox, the liver's workload increases significantly. Without sufficient protein, the liver struggles to keep up with the demand, leading to what is mistakenly referred to as a healing crisis. Phase three of the liver detox is happening in conjunction with phase two. And in phase three, the liver takes the water-soluble state <coughs> and it releases it out via your kidneys. It releases it out via your sweat glands, it releases out via your colon. That's why it's so important that the guests be drinking adequate water. What about exercise in this time? Absolutely. We give our guests an exercise program from 6.30 to 7.30 every day. And then at 1 o'clock every day, and next week I'll be going through the program, the structure of the program we give. We do a Pilates class. They're core strengthening exercises because through the lectures I'm constantly saying how important it is to strengthen the core. And those core muscles are connected with your spine. That's, and in page, I think it's page um, 29 of, of um, Councils on Diet and Food, so Council on Diet and Food, page 29. Ellen White gives one of those amazingly long sentences she does, and she's referring to Daniel. She says, the erect form, the fair countenance, the undimmed senses, the untainted breath. She said, all so many certificates of good habits, insignia of the nobility with which nature honours those who are obedient to her laws. Amazing statement. I did a health school in Fiji one year. I had about 100 students. Mm -hmm. And every day we started with that sentence. And er first day we studied the erect form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we talked much about the core. And then the next day, the fair countenance. So that's what we did for our, our, our framework. But the erect form, many people don't think erect form has to do with strong abdominal muscles. Mm -hmm. Yes? When does swine realize that they need this uh, detox liver? What happens to them, to them? When does one realize they need the detox liver? I guess it's hard to say. Anytime. Yeah, our guests come to our retreat to do the two days 
fast. The reason why I mention the water is because you need to be well hydrated for your kidneys to, to be able to release and you need to have the water so you got the water in you for the, for the big sweat in the steam sauna. Mm -hmm. That's why the steam sauna is, I, I believe it's an important part of the detox. When you're going through a detox, it's important to remember that it's not just your liver that's involved, your whole body is in on the process. Staying hydrated is a big part of this. When you drink enough water, it helps your kidneys flush out toxins and sweating through exercise or a steam sauna helps get rid of impurities. That's why we encourage plenty of water and activities that make you sweat. Your colon also plays a key role. Once your liver has processed the toxins, they're passed out of your body through your colon. So keeping your gut healthy and making sure you're regular is crucial during a detox. Eating plenty of fiber and staying hydrated can really help with this. The Framingham Heart Studies. The, this is a little town of Framingham. The studies have been going for about 40 years, looking at 30,000 people. Some come on, some go. And they set up this study to prove that cholesterol causes heart disease, but it has not. People with low cholesterol levels are having heart attacks. But you know what it did show? People with low cholesterol levels um, are in just as much uh, a danger and even more danger of getting mental problems. Mm -hmm. People with high cholesterol levels don't suffer from dementia. Mm-hmm. Because the brain loves what? Fat. Cholesterol. Fat. Cholesterol, yeah. Mm. Oh, I like this study because it wasn't funded by the pharmaceutical companies. It wasn't funded by the dairy industry, the meat industry, the, the wheat industry. So you don't hear much about that because they don't like the results. So they've lowered the levels. What else have they done to... Reduce heart disease. Uh, put everyone over the age of 50 on cholesterol-lowering medication. Has that helped? The pharmacy. Uh, not at all. Not at all. So we have a book in our library called Lipitor, Thief of Memory. You see, what the cholesterol-lowering medications do, and this is Lipitor, Crestol, all your statin drugs, they block the pathway in the liver that the liver uses to make cholesterol. But that same pathway is the pathway that the liver uses to make coenzyme Q10. What's coenzyme Q10? That's your heart protective enzyme. So on cholesterol-lowering medication, you now lose your heart protective enzyme. So you can be more prone to a heart attack on cholesterol-lowering medication. So why is this book called Thief of Memory? The author is an astronaut and a medical doctor. And he, I think he was about 45. He went to have his yearly blood test. And they said, oh, your cholesterol levels are a little high. What were they? 220. Please go on Lipitor. Six weeks later, his wife found him out in the garden. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know who she was. So they stopped the medication and within about a week he was perfectly fine again. Went back to the doctor a year later, had another blood test. Oh, cholesterol levels are still a bit too high, 220. I want you to go on that Lipitor. He said, I'm not going on that. I nearly went mad on that. So the doctor said, half dose. Six weeks. And why did he do it? Fear. Six weeks later, his wife found him out in the garden, didn't know who she was, didn't know where he was, didn't know who he was. And he stopped immediately. Do you know what the side effects of cholesterol-lowering medication are? Alzheimer's, dementia, memory loss, muscle wasting. And they've just added another one, breast cancer. Where does the devil want to take town? Our mind. How many people in aged care facilities have memory loss and Alzheimer's because of the cholesterol-lowering medication that they're on? Remember Revelation chapter 18? 
verse 23, the last part. Her merchants were the great men of the earth who deceived all nations by her pharmacia, her medications. Yeah. So is this one medication that you don't advise, advise caution with when you have guests to go slow to get off of it? Well, there is a side effect. If you stop the cholesterol-lowering medication, your memory will return. Cholesterol-lowering medications, particularly statins, have been widely prescribed with the aim of reducing heart disease risk. However, evidence suggests that these drugs may have unintended consequences beyond the cardiovascular system. Statins work by inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase, which plays a crucial role in cholesterol production. This same enzyme is also involved in the synthesis of coenzyme Q10, which is essential for cellular energy production and heart health. The depletion of coenzyme Q10 can impact overall cardiovascular health and contribute to muscle pain and weakness, which some patients experience as a side effect. Additionally, recent studies have raised concerns about the long-term effects of statins on cognitive function. Research has linked these medications to an increased risk of memory loss and cognitive decline, though the exact mechanisms are not yet fully understood. Despite these concerns, the prescription of statins remains common, often due to their role in managing cholesterol levels. Patients considering or currently on statins should be aware of these potential side effects and discuss any concerns with their healthcare provider. Regular monitoring and a comprehensive approach to heart health may help mitigate risks associated with these medications. So there are some herbs that you can give people to boost liver function. So let's have a look at the herbs. And remember Psalm 104 verse 14, where the Bible says that God gave herbs for the service of man. And you've probably heard the saying, bitter to the mouth, sweet to the stomach, sweet to the mouth, bitter to the stomach. You can also apply that to liver, sweet to the mouth, bitter to the liver, bitter to the mouth, sweet to the liver. So all your bitter herbs are great for the liver. So this is dandelion, and that can be the flower or the stem or the leaf or the root. It all has those bitter properties. Gentian, gentian's a very bitter herb. Uh, it's a root. And St Mary's thistle, and sometimes that's called milk thistle. So we have, uh, we have a herb company in Australia. It's called MediHerb, and it's a practitioner-only one, but you can get tablets, herbal tablets, and they have one herbal tablet that has all these herbs in it. And if we get someone that's got liver pain, uh, gall pain, we get them to suck on those bitter herbs. Very bitter, but it... it, uh, it seems to bring relief. Should they not swallow that tablet? Well, if they suck it, they'll access it. Access it quicker. Okay. That bitter in the mouth. They don't like it, but when they get the relief, they like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Is it the same when drinking, for example, dandelion juice? Some bitter herbs? Yeah. Well? Yes, D dandelion juice is very bitter. Bitter herbs like dandelion and gentian stimulate bile production and improve liver detoxification processes. They can enhance digestion by promoting the release of digestive enzymes and supporting liver function. Dandelion in particular is known for its diuretic properties, which can help the liver in flushing out toxins. Gentian, with its intense bitterness, not only helps in increasing bile flow, but also supports overall digestive health. Mary's thistle, or milk thistle, is widely recognised for its liver protective qualities due to its active ingredient, psilomarin. Psilomarin acts as an antioxidant, helping to repair liver cells and combat oxidative stress. 
Thanks for joining me as we explored the vital functions of the liver. I hope you now have a better understanding of how this essential organ supports your overall health and well-being. If you found this information helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you stay updated with our latest videos. Take care of your liver and I'll see you in the next video.